Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. We're now less than one day away from the Book of Boba Fett Chapter 2 and I can't wait to do another full episode breakdown and share all of my thoughts with you guys. As you know, I found Chapter 1 to be incredible and I definitely get the feeling just reading through comments that I enjoyed the episode way more than most people did. Now for those of you who didn't like it, I just hope that Chapter 2 can change your mind about the series. So today my dear friends, we're going to go through a couple of tidbits of information that have come out over the last couple of days and we're also going to be taking a look at some awesome character posters. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. We begin with the Tusken Raiders who played a huge role in Episode 1 and undoubtedly are going to appear again in flashbacks in the next chapter as well. So in terms of flashbacks and not current day Boba, now that he's conquered the mighty desert beast and brought its head back, he's earned the trust and respect of the Tuscan tribe. Now we're probably going to see how Boba integrated himself into their culture and attained his black robes and gaffy stick before we see him in the Mandalorian season 2. This isn't just speculation, there is plenty of evidence in flashback footage from the trailers that have not appeared yet in the show and those sequences involve a Tuscan attired Boba going after the slave one before he goes after his armor. So speaking of Tuscans, a couple of the actors behind the masks have given some more information over the last two days. One actor who plays the chief of the tribe simply posted on Instagram, see you again next week, which confirms he's going to be in tomorrow's episode. And another, Rory Ross, gave a much more profound deep dive behind the scenes with the variety of info revealed. The one that stands out in particular in his long list of tweets is that he's been involved in both the Book of Boba Fett and also Obi-Wan Kenobi, but for the Kenobi series he played a stormtrooper who he says has a much more important role than the Tuscan he plays in the Book of Boba Fett. Now this got me thinking and I now have a theory I want to share with you. What if the stormtrooper that we see in the Sarlacc pit with Boba is one who falls in in the Kenobi series? Both shows are primarily set on Tatooine, Kenobi being many years earlier, but that would be an awesome connection and explain why a stormtrooper ended up in the pit of Carcoon. I think it was deliberate and also a callback to something we're gonna see in Obi-Wan Kenobi. During the Kenobi series, which is set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, we know that the Empire is hunting down Jedi across the galaxy through the Sith Inquisitors and as the concept art shows, one of them actually comes to Tatooine with stormtroopers for backup. Maybe one sequence takes us to the Dune Sea, where we see a duel between an Inquisitor and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he takes care of the stormtroopers first, with one of them falling into the Sarlacc. Just a theory, but given that this actor is in both shows, this stormtrooper that we see in the Sarlacc pit in the Book of Boba Fett might be the one he plays in Obi-Wan Kenobi. So Rory Ross then goes on to reveal that all of his scenes were not filmed using the volume and the reason he gives is that the volume is not good for direct sunlight. He also states that most of his scenes are in the first episode but some of them were left over for chapter 2. And then finally something crucial he brings up is that the actors playing Tuscans were told not to raise their sticks and shriek as they did in A New Hope and this adds to something that Favreau has been setting up ever since The Mandalorian's first season. They're changing the reputation and image of the Sand People. George Lucas painted them as barbaric and tribal simpletons. We finally see them as people who are capable of complex emotions, behaviors, and social structures. I did make a video about this after The Mandalorian season two dropped, but let me know if you guys want an updated version. And even if the cultures are fictional, they're still fascinating to unpick. With the Tusken Raiders, I think there is so much to talk about if I did make a follow up, especially in light of how the Jawas did not receive any of the same redemptive treatment. They are the same as they always were, and speaking of which... Martini, Martini. So now my dear friends, let's talk a bit more about chapter 2. Fennec has taken a member of Nightwind captive and it's looking like this is the episode that Boba is going to confront the Athorian mayor, who is voiced by the way by Robert Rodriguez. It sounded like Pedro Pascal but it is in fact Rodriguez. Pedro did record some lines for the book of Boba Fett so we will see Din Djarin at some point but the mayor is Robert Rodriguez. Now when Boba Fett confronts the mayor we all assume that the fighters, the red assassins, 
are working for him, but we simply don't know. We've theorised multiple times on the channel if there is a bigger bad behind them, but time will tell. If they are working for this mayor, I just hope his character is going to be solid. I don't want to speculate any further because I just want the plot to play out as it's going to, but I am excited to see how that confrontation goes. And all week the official Star Wars account keeps mentioning the mayor, so I think that's going to be in chapter 2. Introducing us to the mayor is going to help the current day plot pick up quite a bit, and even though we will get more flashbacks, which I adore by the way, the story is going to begin pressing on quite quickly. And now speaking of the mayor my dear friends, we've been given two more awesome character posters. One of them is Garza Fwip, the owner of the sanctuary on Mos Espa, and the second is the mayor's major domo, who I suspect is going to have a prominent role throughout the show, otherwise why would they have bothered to make one of these for him? Now whether he's going to be prominent or not, for me at least, he was a highlight of chapter 1. He brought the comedic element of it with a really funny sarcastic flair. Now I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, in fact, I've seen a lot of criticism of his character, but I thought he worked really well and I really hope to see more of him going forward. And let's be honest, we could always use some more Twi'leks in the Star Wars universe. And so finally, my dear friends, we're going to be talking about the Trandoshan that we saw in episode 1, Doc Strassi, because the Book of Boba Fett just highlighted something about Trandoshans, which we kind of knew about, but this doubles down on it. And even though it was canon before, especially in the Clone Wars, we now see the extent of it amongst the Trandoshan species. And I'm talking about the fact that Trandoshans target Wookiees. From a certain point of view, The Empire Strikes Back is an anthology containing 40 short stories that explore the experience of background characters in episode 5, and one of these is Tooth and Claw by Michael Coge, which centres around Bosk. Tooth and Claw explores Bosk's activities while working under the Empire, which primarily dealt with hunting down Wookiees. He even later tried to capture Chewbacca, but repeatedly lost, which led him to hating Han Solo and Chewie. This book demonstrated that Trandoshans hated the Wookiees and took pleasure in capturing them. Now even though this anthology is canon, it only talked about Bosk, and while we knew that Trandoshans as a culture did target Wookiees, it wasn't known that they specifically saw Wookiees as a particularly special hunt. The offering of a Wookiee pelt was not known to be that special, but the fact that it was offered to Boba Fett who is seen as the new daimyo fortifies just how special they see Wookiee hunting, above all else, because in the Clone Wars Season 3, in two episodes Padawan Lost and Wookiee Hunt, we see Trandoshans hunting Wookiees among other species. In the game preserve that Ahsoka was taken to, we see that they hunted all sorts of aliens for sport, but the implication in the Book of Boba Fett is that Wookiees are placed above all other creatures in Trandoshan hunting sport. So that was an interesting detail and callback, and as the trailers show, we are going to see more of Doc Strossi. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below guys, are you excited for chapter 2 tomorrow? And a bigger question to do with Trandoshans is whether or not the appearance of Doc Strossi is forecasting Bosk. I'd love to see him in this series, as well as other classic bounty hunters. I'm sure we're in for many big surprises, as the series goes on, it might not be straight away, let's be patient. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a massive welcome if you are. And also, why not consider becoming a patron? The link is down there in the description and you get access to videos that are not found here on YouTube, access to our Discord server and so much more. May the force be with you all. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have an amazing day no matter where you are in the galaxy.